My friends, today I have some amazing exercises for you that might replace some rather ineffective workouts you currently have in your personal practice routine. Because let's face the ugly truth, us guitar players kind of keep the same exercises in our routines for way too long, when we should rather switch them out on a regular basis to make the most amount of progress. So let's check out five awesome workouts that will spice up your routine for 2024 right away. So to start off, you might have something like the classic spider exercise in your routine right now when it comes to minimizing the movements of your fingers and also also controlling that nasty pinky finger. Workouts like this in the chromatic or semi-chromatic scale are absolute classics and people are practicing them since forever for a reason. They can be quite effective at the start of your journey. But if you feel like you spend quite some time with workouts like this already and you want to move to something more practical that doesn't only sound better, but also works even better for keeping your pinky finger under control and close to the neck, I would suggest working with something musical instead. What about small triad arpeggios? <laughs> So with these super small arpeggios, I'm just playing the root note, third and fifth. And I've seen a lot of students on my Patreon page playing them like this. So with lots of finger movement and that might result in some unwanted noise. And it also stands in the way of building guitar speed since it's much easier to play faster when your movements are small and when you can actually control your fingers, especially that pinky. So here's a really cool and musical exercise based on those small arpeggios. Pay attention to how close my pinky finger is remaining to the fretboard. That's the main goal with this exercise, aside from keeping the alternate picking going. <laughs> Up next, let's talk about string skipping with the picking hand and also about economy of motion and finger relaxation with the fretting hand. So when it comes to string skipping, most players just pick a lick where you have to skip between different strings. Sounds simple enough. So right here I was thinking about the D minor pentatonic shape and I was just skipping the B string, just playing on the G and E strings. But when it comes to picking control and playing across all strings effortlessly, what has helped me much much more is actually playing on all strings, but just playing one note per string. That is actually pretty hard to do in a great exercise already, just working with alternate picking, so downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, but playing on a different string for every single stroke. That will not only unlock your wrist, because it's kind of impossible to do this with a super stiff wrist, it will also help you with building speed and control and clean transitions between different strings and obviously string skipping, because you can clearly control on which string you're playing on. So that's an effective workout I recommend and if you want to make it even more effective, you should combine it with a chord or arpeggio shape with your fretting hand. If you know my music, you know that I absolutely love minor at nine chords. So if we take one of these cool shapes and move it back and forth, one semitone. We get a cool sounding exercise and picking across a lot of strings with alternate picking. When I play this one for you right now, please pay attention to how all of those fingers, so the middle finger, ring finger and pinky finger remain in place. And I'm just skipping with my index finger like this. This is really great because you physically can't anchor with your index finger since it has to move around between the A and E string. So this workout is great once again for keeping your fingers close to the fretboard, but it also trains your finger independence. <laughs> By the way, my friends, of course, and as always, I made slow play along exercise videos for you so that you can learn these exercises and you can play along to a video of me playing them so that you can compare your picking technique and your fretting hand technique for maximum results. And to challenge you, I also made fast play along exercise videos. I made a guitar profile with full instrumentation so that you can change the tempo yourself or even modify the exercises to build your own personal awesome routine for this year. I made some backing tracks with and without my guitar to play along to and a PDF tab sheet ready for you to download on patreon.com slash burn. Over there you also get access to over 20 full guitar courses like my awesome alternate picking masterclass that will allow you to play like this over the course of 30 days. So if you are still not part of the world's biggest guitar page on Patreon, what are you waiting for? Join us today with the link in the description or in the first comment down below. Get access to all the guitar courses you will ever need in one place right away. I'm waiting for you over there, but now let's check out some more awesome exercises. What I want to talk to you about next is legato, so hammer-ons and pull-offs. So a lot of guitar players work on this by just having some simple hammer-on or pull-off riffs in their routine where they're pulling off to an open string. 
and that's not bad to get a basic feeling for those techniques. But once you have the basic mechanics down, my suggestion is to focus on what might be the hardest aspect of it all, note spacing and dynamics. What I mean with that is that a lot of intermediate guitar players make the mistake of playing legato lines with bad note spacing, so the notes don't fully line up on the grid because it's kind of difficult to only play with hammer-ons and pull-offs. And fluid legato lines only sound good when you're playing exact 16th notes or triplets or whatever you want to play. <laughs> So the next exercise I want to show you is especially aimed at this. First of all, I want you to play on the high E string because with most kind of hammer-on pull-off exercises, it's always on the low E string. And to be honest, it's a little bit easier to do it on the lower string. So the first challenge is to get good sounding notes on the high E string. And the second challenge when it comes to rhythm and note spacing is that you're playing 16th notes first with alternate picking. So with picking it will be relatively easy to play super tight 16th notes so you have a good reference. And then I want you to mimic those tight 16th notes with your legato technique. <laughs> So the next exercise is about another literally huge topic when it comes to your fretting hand stretching. A lot of my students on Patreon seem to complain about not being able to stretch, but from my experience this is not about having short or long fingers, of course having very long fingers helps a bit, but it's actually more about finger placement and working with the right exercises. So right now you might have something in your routine based on just one string and one interval, like jumping to the fourth on one string and going back and forth. <laughs> And those stretching exercises on one string are a good way of getting a feeling for the thumb position, for the finger position. But once again, I would recommend something a bit more practical. When it comes to stretching, as you might know, I prefer working with four note per string scales, because working with scales like this is not only a great stretching exercise, because you will have to stretch when you play four notes per string. It actually also gives you a reason for working this hard on stretching, because you can use those shapes in your guitar solo. So I would recommend starting with a scale that you already know, like the A minor scale, and instead of playing three notes, so A, B and C, you're playing four notes on one string, so you're extending it to D and D with the pinky finger. To stretch like this, it really helps when you place your thumb behind your middle finger, so you won't be able to perform this kind of stretch when your thumb is peeking out from behind the fretboard or when it's positioned all the way to the right or all the way to the left. Place it behind the middle finger and you will see your hand extends almost automatically. And for the final tip, I would actually recommend to work on a pattern that's not just based on one string. I have one for you once again that's great for finger independence because it doesn't allow you to anchor with your index finger the index finger has to jump in between different strings and you also have to do that with the pick. So this one's a great and practical workout once again with multiple benefits. Check it out. Lastly, let's talk about a topic that might be the most important one of today's video, hand synchronization. So the synchronization between your picking hand and your fretting hand, of course you always want to play the right note when you pick either a downstroke or an upstroke with your picking hand and without perfectly synchronizing your hands, you will never sound like a professional guitar player and as we all know, that's pretty hard when you play very very fast. So when it comes to hand synchronization, a lot of players don't really have specific workouts for that in their routine, they just work on their scales. <laughs> And you know me by now, working on scales with alternate picking is always a good idea. But if you really want to isolate and train correct synchronization between the hands, I have a much, much better workout for you today. Because when you play very fast like this and you're not that experienced yet, especially with your ears, you might have a hard time really hearing if your hands are synchronized or not. And if you're really pushing for speed and challenging yourself, you also might not be able to feel if you play it enough down and up strokes, too many of them. So the best way I found of synchronizing the hands while being able to actually control if you're doing the workout correctly, simply adding open strings in your workouts. Because if you play something like this, you can immediately hear if you played the correct amount of notes and if your hands are correctly synced up. Because chances are when you play something like this fast for the first time, it will sound like this. That does not feel or sound right because you don't get that satisfying sound and feeling of one fretted note, two open notes, one fretted note, two open notes. And even if you're new to all this, this gives you a great system of actually feeling the connection between your hands and if you're playing the correct amount of picking strokes, just like this. <laughs> Alright, 
my friend, make sure to head over to patreon.com slash burned right now. You can find the link in the description and in the first comment down below. Download all your practice files for this video so that you can get started with improving your technique right away and with finally swapping those old exercises in your practice routine. Once you're a member, you will get immediate access to over 20 guitar courses. And if you choose to become a VIP or platinum member, you can also post your progress videos in our secret Facebook group and I will personally give you feedback on your technique so that you make the fastest amount of progress in the shortest amount of time possible. I'll see you in the next video. Have an awesome day. Greetings from Vienna and bye bye.